Hey YouTube, welcome back. We got another episode today and we're gonna be showing you some updates on the downhill bike. I got some new ideas for the suspension. I'm gonna add some long travel uh, trail arms and add a second coil to the rear suspension so that I can hit some bigger bumps. I'm also removing the motor at this time to lighten up the load and make it strictly a gravity chair. So stay, stick with us. Here's some of the components I'm making. Got some ball joints, long travel, rear trail arms. Alright, so this is the beginning makings of my rear linkage for the three-point trail arm suspension that I'm setting up. I didn't really show you guys the fiberglass seat pan that I did a while back. Forgot to record that. Alright, so if you guys don't remember, I had a brushless motor on here. Uh, you may have missed it. Uh, we've got to record, but we were at the Triumph Sports Festival in the skate park. And basically, I tried dropping in, which resulted in me tweaking uh, the motor and bending the motor mounts and smashing it on the side of the coping. So this is what has brought me to reinventing the rear swing arm and kind of changing up the bike a little bit. So YouTube, I just want to give you an update. It's kind of loud out there in the shop and I wanted to show you what we got next. So basically we have the downhill bike and it's got a um, brushless motor on right now, but we're going to turn it into a gravity chair. The reason being that it's gonna become a gravity chair is so that we could hit up the local mountains here in California. They have a lot of regulations on e-bikes and how e-bikes work and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna opt out to remove the motor. What it's gonna do is gonna save us a lot of weight, probably about 20 pounds plus, and bring this gravity chair, which is a QMX gravity chair, is what we're gonna call it and lighten it up and allow me to hit bigger jumps. I'm gonna add a second coil over, so we're gonna have uh, dual coils in the rear and independent rear suspension, long travel suspension. I'm hoping that this will handle up to at least 65 to 50 foot jumps so that when we go to Crankworks, uh, we are able to hit some of their big jumps. Uh, stick with us and we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna to try to go back into the shop and film some of me attaching and assembling the rear swing arm and suspension that I have it all welded or somewhat welded and mocked up. All right, hang out, stick with us, enjoy. Sorry YouTube, I know the sound in here is bad because of all the machines, but there's the new long travel linkage trailing arm for the bike. Go 
about something like this, then you'll have full range, about eight inches of travel, eight inches of travel overall. I won't bore you with all the details, but I'll keep you posted. All right, YouTube. This is what we got here. We're going to be installing this bad boy. Not just one, but two. Let me grab that for you. That's right. We got two. One, two. Check those bad boys out. Right? So these are said to have had about almost four inches of travel. Three and 6.5, you know, metric conversion, that whole thing. But what it's gonna do, I don't know if you can see this. A bone. One there, one on the other side for those trailing arms. It's gonna be sick. Stay tuned. All right, YouTube, so this is the gist of the system. You have your trailing, trailing arm, which will get a shock mounted to it. So let me show you that now. So here's one of our beautiful Fox racing shocks. going to go somewhere in here like this. Let me bring you in closer. And it goes and connects. Comes back. Got the shock. And then you know everybody wants to see it from behind, so let me show you that. So here it is. Uh oh, I'm about to drop the shock. So when you're mocking things up, everybody knows that you don't always just fully attach it there. Sometimes it's just sitting there. So here it is. All right, with the shock removed, I can now demonstrate the suspension linkage. So it's connected, tie rod, trailing arm. Just like all the new razors, it's gonna have long travel suspension. about eight and a half inches when it's all said and done. Stay tuned. Say so, hey, YouTube, it works out that magnetic pedals, Mac lock, also work as a uh, great bolt holders while you're installing your new uh, tie rods and trailing arm system. Boom. All right, YouTube, I finished assembling the right side. I didn't bother putting on the left side because I'm still having issues adjusting the linkage to exactly where I want it. So here's a look so far.
Okay, and then here it is in the raised position. So we ended up with about eight and a half inches of travel. All right, YouTube. So I had some setbacks, basically. I ended up uh, not liking the position, so now I gotta cut everything by two inches. That means I gotta cut the tie rod, uh, trailing arm by two inches, that means I got to cut all these tie rods that I just did by about two inches. I'm going to cut those by two and a half just so I have some adjustment uh, to uh, change it out if I want to. <clears throat> but you can see here, I had to, I moved it up uh, one step, uh, which was about the two inches. <clears throat> and that put me in the place where I wanted to be. So now i just got to redo it all cut everything and set it up for two inches shorter and that's going to bring my back end in about an inch uh, so that the front end will be slightly wider than the rear end which will help me in cornering and tracking and stuff like that uh so yeah so we're going backwards a little bit right now we'll keep you posted i did find some good places to mount the shocks uh, but i may have to end up cutting the seat so there you go. All is well. So here's the view from the back. You can see I also stepped the tie rods over, um, which was about that two inches, to get me into the right positioning where I wanted to be uh, for the trailing arm and the spindle to sit level and uh, sit at the right angle that we needed. But now I'm gonna have to trim the seat a little bit to get the shock mount where I need it to be. It's going to be a really tight fit in there. All right, YouTube. Uh, I got the bike rotated right now, and basically we're finishing up all the welding to uh, complete the bike now that I've decided how I want it done and how I want it cut. So here you can see I've cleaned my weld and weld it all the way around the new extension piece that I've added and right now I'm getting ready to uh, weld these uh, tie rod in arms mounting brackets on and then I will I've also removed some fat put off some extra pieces that weren't needed and pretty much just uh, buttoning it all up now all right so with all that said I still have quite a bit of work to do. I'll eventually get it done. Um, once I got the welding done and uh, put some paint on there, we got some demoing done. Uh, we'll eventually uh, get this thing stripped down and then paint it. That's one of the last things we'll do. But until then, let's hammer it, let's ride it, and let's test it. Um, this is version two of the uh, downhill QMX.